So this is an example, and it's the first example of a set that is just completely beyond our grasp in every way. The set itself and its complement are not recursively enumerable. We cannot recognize either the set or its complement. I'm showing you this example because I don't want you to think that everything is, you can recognize one side, but it's the other side that's hard. There are some problems where both sides are just death, and you can't do anything. And it's usually when you kind of have infinite going in two directions, and that it's kind of a vague idea, but it, that is kind of what's going on. I think we should do a couple more examples, because I, I want your intuition to be good like this before I tell you the theorem, and before I actually prove anything neat. So you, yeah? The, the, the thing where if you have a recursively enumerable language, then you, you know that it, and you, for that to be a real recursively enumerable language, you know that its complement can also be recursively It cannot be recursively, but right. Does it sometimes work out where you think you found a recursively enumerable language, and then you check its complement, and you find out? Like is, it, is that also like a useful method to find enumerable language, to find recursive language? It's very rare that you didn't notice that something was recursive, and then you finally noticed because you checked it's you right. That's okay. That's what I was. Yeah, I don't. No, that's not commonly used. It's more just you should realize this is not so much a theorem that I told you before as it is. Make sure you understand the implications of these definitions. It's pretty straightforward that that two sides of recursively enumerable implies recursive. But nobody uses it, I think, as a tool to find recursive algorithm. How about this? Uh, A equals Turing machines that accept only one string. Everyone understand? Some Turing machines accept only one string. Some finite state machines accept only one string. Some Turing machines accept only one thing and reject everything else, or infinite loop on everything else. But there's only one string that it's going to accept. So I want to know about A, and I want to know about A complement. What do you think? If you try strings here, what happens? Say, say, let's do possibility. If, so what you want to think about a complement. If, if it's a complement, the things that, that don't accept only one string, what would you do? You'd start to run it, right? And say you accepted the 93rd string, and then you keep running it, and then you're up to uh, the 180th string, and it accepts that too. Then you say, hey, well, it just accepted two strings. It doesn't accept one string. Right? You think that's a good algorithm? So this is recursively enumerable. Yeah, what about if it doesn't accept any string? What about if I go ahead and simulate, and I do my trick. I do my dovetailing parallel trick. I mean, I got everything running at the same time. I got the first string running. It's been running for 2,000 steps. The second string has been running for 1,999 steps, etc. I'm up to the 2,000th string, and I keep expanding more strings into my alphabet and, and, and into my uh, machine, and I keep working on them. And I've done this for, say, the first 2 trillion strings, and none of them have gotten accepted. And I run this for another two million years, and none of them have gotten accepted. So can I answer that question yet? I still don't know. OK, so, it, so Chris, you would be OK in getting a recognizer here if the only way to recognize a complement was if the machine recognized two or more strings. Because I will find out if the string recognizes two or more. That I'll eventually find out. But if the string recognizes none, I'll never find that out. So this, this idea doesn't quite work, and this is not recursively enumerable. What about this? Except only one string. You can simulate it through, and what if it doesn't accept anything? You'll never know. So this is also not recursively enumerable. It's another example. And this is such an easy one. Geez, you figure you could look at a machine and decide whether it accepts just one thing or not. But you can't even recognize either end of that set. OK, one more. Last one. Turing machines that accept nothing.
Turing machines that accept nothing. I give you a Turing machine, I want to know if any inputs I throw on here, it always just goes into an infinite loop or says no. Never ever stops and says yes. What do you think? You think this is recursively enumerable? You mean Turing machines that accept something? How would I check a Turing machine that accepts something? Start feeding it strings. Start feeding it strings. Of course, we have to be careful. I can't just feed it strings in order and spend too long on any string. If I wait to see if it accepts the empty string until it either does or doesn't, I may wait forever. So I have to do my trick. This dovetailing trick is what I always call it. I don't know why I call it that, because I think of it like kind of this. Whatever you want to call it, the idea is you have to be able to simulate executing all the strings in parallel, adding new strings as you go. So the typical way it's done is if you're up to your 10,000th step, then you will execute the first string 10,000 times, the next string 9,999 times you have done that, and then your newest string that you're including in your list gets executed once. So if you do all those things in parallel, then sooner or later you will actually execute the string that gets accepted, if there is one, enough steps for it to get accepted. And if you do, you'll know that the machine doesn't accept the empty set. So this is recursively enumerable, but I'll write in parentheses here, it uses this dovetailing idea, and you should get used to that dovetailing idea, because it's a very, very common. The idea of starting the machine on one string for one step, the next step, have it go one more stage on that string, and add in the new string and start one step on that new string. After that, add the third string in. One step on the third string, an extra step on all the previous strings. Then add the fourth string in. Execute them all at the same time, adding one step in extra for each string that's already there. Yeah, Joe? It doesn't accept anything. Then it goes on forever. Right. That's why it's only recursively enumerable and not recursive. And that's just why, just what you said, is why this is not recursively enumerable. If you're trying to check that it actually accepts nothing, you'll never find out. You can run it forever and still not know. Maybe just after you wrote this down, three seconds later the machine stops and says, I accept, and you would have been wrong. So you can't know that it accepts nothing, but you can accept that it accepts something. So here's an example, another one where there's a flip. Recursively enumerable, not recursively enumerable. Here are two examples where they're both not recursively enumerable. There's a whole set of theorems about how to decide whether something's recursively enumerable or not recursively enumerable. And here's a version of one of them, which is very, very easy to, to state and not too bad to prove. And we won't prove it today. We'll get to it at some point. But here's what it basically says. If you have a language like this that consists of Turing machines and you want to accept all the Turing machines that something, some property, you know, that halt on every input, that accept only one string, that accept nothing. If there are at least, well, if this property is not trivial, then at least one of these is going to be not recursively enumerable. That's what the theorem says. What does trivial mean? It means if the property is true for all Turing machines, that's trivial. But if there's at least one Turing machine that it's true for and one that it isn't, that's not trivial and it's impossible to write an algorithm for it. So what's an example of a trivial property? Turing machines that, uh, that have at least one state in them. Right, that's trivial. Turing machines that generate a recursively enumerable set. Well, they all do. Program by definition generates sets that you can recognize. Anything that's trivial is, is simple to decide. But anything that you can have one Turing machine that does it, like halts on every input, there's some that do that, there are some that don't, anything like that, any non-trivial property of the Turing machines makes the language, at least one half of it, not recursively enumerable. The distinction to know whether its complement is recursively enumerable or not, that's a harder theorem, and we'll get to it later. Okay, questions about this stuff? I don't exactly understand uh, dovetailing. I understand that if you have a, if it accepts something that is a finite length, that you can find it in a finite amount of time. But what is dovetailing again? All right. So what you said is the main idea of it. Let me explain it again, because probably not everybody gets.